Procurement is all activities required in order to get the product from the supplier to its final destination. It encompasses the purchasing function, incoming inspection, and quality control and assurance, allowing companies to make supplier selection decisions based on total cost of ownership rather than the price. The process is cyclical. How cyclical? Well, let's find out. The first stage of the procurement process is to know exactly what the business needs. This will help you to come up with the procurement specifications. This is not something you just pull off the back of your head. You need to ensure that you've engaged the right stakeholders at this point. Just so we are on the same page, remember stakeholders are people who can affect or be affected by the business. So tap into their expertise so that you can develop high level specifications. And not just that, involving them also means that they can later support you if you need their support down the line to make your position stronger in negotiation or something. Number two, develop strategy and a plan. At this point, the assumption is that you already have the specification as well as an outline of what your business requires and have also gone ahead and assessed the marketplace. When developing your plan or strategy, ensure that you consider the impact the external environment has. Remember, your business does not exist in a vacuum. It will be influenced by factors beyond its control. I'm talking about things like competitors, economic system, social aspects, monetary and political, or even legal system. The point is to consider all the factors while coming up with your plan and strategy. Number three, pre-procurement, market test, and market engagement. Before going straight to the market, you need to test it. Look for things like whether or not it's the right time to procure, what are your competitors doing, what about suppliers, are there new legislation, etc. The fourth stage is development of documentation. So now that you know what the market looks like, you'll have to spend time working on your tender documents. You have to see to it that things like service level agreements, terms and conditions, along with specifications are consistent. Make sure that the pricing, product quality, operational functionality, and the products are fit for the purpose in order to reduce the financial impact of wrong specifications further down the line. The fifth stage is to select suppliers you are interested in. Conducting a request for information or RFI at this stage in the procurement cycle will help you gain insights into supplier size, capabilities, financial, strength and weakness before assessing whether they should be included in the tender process. Number six, issue invitation to tenders as well as request for quotations. Once you've selected the companies to participate, a formal invitation to tender and request for quotation is sent out to participants. Items to be included are specifications and documentations developed around the business requirements along with clear timescales to respond. The seventh thing is tender valuation or bid valuation and validation. So after your potential suppliers have submitted their tenders, they have to be evaluated and validated so as to pick the right supplier or suppliers. Whether tendering contracts for supply of goods or services, tender evaluation should be carried out in a structured and disciplined and transparent manner. Most evaluations explore price comparisons alongside technical capability, capacity, quality of service, and financial health. At this stage, a post-tender negotiation often takes place along with checking of references and credit checks or carrying out supplier visit, technical audit, product sampling, or a trial. All life costs should also be considered including the decommissioning, removal, or disposal costs. The eighth stage is contract award and implementation. Now that you have your suppliers, the next thing is to develop a contract. This will show that both parties are fully aware and understand their obligations. The ninth stage is warehouse logistics and receipt. The idea is to have your warehouse operation in order, things like product coding, classification, space layout, um, and racking, frequency of delivery, order processing, and booking in procedures to ensure that efficient process along with any other business requirements are okay. Number 10, contract performance and review as well as continuous improvement. So keep on assessing if the suppliers are meeting the KPIs, okay? If they are meeting their key performance indicators. Remember, this is a continuous process. And the last thing you want to look at, depending on the nature of the procurement, is asset management as well as end of life and lesson learned. So over time, assessments will be carried out on whether the business requirements have changed. 
whether the agreement is still required and fit for purpose, what can be learned from the process, and how this can be incorporated to improve the process next time. So, depending on what you find out at this stage, this cycle begins again. So that's that, okay? Let me know if you have any questions regarding this cycle. So as always, make sure you follow the Right Network for contents about what is what on business, finance and law, video resources, PDF notes, ebooks, among others. Till next time, cheers.